Okay. All right, as has long been teased, we are going over the Marks Big Rail set today. Um, this uh, uh, episode, or video, however you want to call it, is actually a pretty special one. It is sponsored. Yes, indeed. The channel has its very first sponsor. Uh, Red Brick Collectible, sorry. Uh, there we go. If uh, you're in the St. Louis area, give them a... Uh, try on a couple different things they uh don't really dabble in trains but they do dabble in anything that comes in the door which doesn't include trains at times so i actually got in a couple interesting things from them but i got this set from them um for free if i would do a video over it and mention it so got that out of the way um so anyways this is the mark's big rail set uh it was uh a, uh, definitely a high-end set for Marks at the time. Uh, I believe they offered it starting in 70-ish. And it ran until, I think, 73 or 4, basically, towards till the uh, end of uh, Marks train production. This particular guy, let me check my notes. These are from um, uh, the Greenberg Guide to Marks Trains Volume 3 sets. In the event that you are curious where I get my information from. Uh, this set uh, doo -doo 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 is from 1972 uh, because its transformer has a circuit breaker. So, oh, let me go turn that off real quick. I left that on. Don't need that noise. So, this set was boxed, and it was actually very rarely run. Let me move the uh, camera here. Give you an idea of the box. There she is. Pretty cool. Uh, the box top's not in too bad a shape. But, um, the styrofoam uh, bottom is. It was uh, definitely ate on by some kind of critters. So you've probably seen that box. Big rail sets are pretty common. Um, they initially were uh, lettered up for the uh, Penn Central, and then later on, get this out of the way, would find themselves lettered up for the Santa Fe, which I will kind of go over briefly. So go ahead and fire this guy up and let you watch, watch it for a second. Had her just loaded it up with uh, smoke fluid. They are definitely good smokers so this is the mark 1666 um sort of a uh, evolution of the mark 666 which was a die cast so it became these guys uh, most of them have smoke units i was always told all of them do but i've heard a rumor that some don't some even have a steam chest smoke they have a smoke emission down here i have one that'll be a, another video i'll go over and the set came with a typical Marks Penn Central slope bag tender. You'll see these guys all the time lettered up for all sorts of things. And then a Marks Erie. And that is not focusing very good at all. Let me try that again. Oh, well, not, it's just not focusing very well. Sorry about that, guys. Huh. Let's see if I pull it up on the front track. I got a loop set up for running this guy. There we go. All right, let me move the rest of these guys up. Yeah, I got it up on that loop. This one's good uh, with marks. You got to be careful with fat wheels on them. I've gone over those in other videos. So some of them don't like running on uh, Lionel turnouts. Uh, this one's actually got a double reduction motor, but uh, it still hangs up every once in a while. So I didn't want to have it fly off the tracks while we're trying to shoot a video. We got an Erie log car. A uh, red B and O uh, box car, and then a uh, green Penn Central 
um, caboose. Uh, later on, these would be lettered up for the uh, Santa Fe, and you would get a maroon caboose typically, um, and then they would move over to a green um, Great Northern boxcar, and then sometimes you'd get a blue B&O boxcar depending on the set. And then, um, if you're not too familiar with Mark's trains, let me uh, get these guys back on the back track. So the way their operating accessories and operating cars worked is a little different. But, uh, get that guy. There's a nice close-up of the caboose. They're just a traditional 027 style caboose. Nothing too fancy. Um, very colorful stuff usually. But the way Marks would do it is you would have um, these guys here. Now, if the train was running backwards, or you had the car the wrong way, this guy would just push out of the way. Because you would have a little catch. I'll show you that in a second. But if it was going the right way, you would hit that, and it would pop open. Let me move the camera back a little bit so you can see the insides of these. It's a pretty simple setup. You just got a little spring, a little... Little guy there, see? Super simple. It was very, very foolproof design. Marks used this style on so many cars. Um, and then it would just toss the logs. My uh, big rail set, unfortunately, is missing a few items, which we'll go over. So let me go ahead and get these guys out of the way. And kind of. Zoom her back out a little bit. And we're going to move down the table here. So. Get us set up over here. Okay. So. I did want to show you what the difference is. On what they refer to as the uh, deluxe Marks cars. Uh, actually got sliding doors. Um, they are a little bit bigger. A lot of people seem to think that this is uh like going to be like the same uh, mold as the other guy, and they are not. They are a little different, a little bigger. And they, as you can see, they got a little bit more deco on them. This here, though, is something interesting. I'll do a separate video on this guy. This is the Lion, or Lion, oh my gosh, the uh, Marks uh, noisemaker they put on these things. It's just a, uh, let's see if I can get that in focus. Let's see here. Come on. There we go. Yeah, it kind of did. But uh, that wheel there hits the uh, third rail. And those brakes, as it goes, uh, the static in there uh, gets brakes up and it goes. Very similar to um, Lionel Sound of Steam. Uh, but this actually predates it. These came out. Uh, nobody's 100% sure if it's 69 or 70, but they were definitely out by 70. And uh, they do have a little speaker in there, and they do have a little control panel in there, a little circuit board guy. And as they go down the rails, they just... But this was what came with big rails when they had uh, Santa Fe markings on them. They were upgraded to have this sound system, and it's uh, not bad. In some ways, it's actually a little better than the uh, Lionel setup. It's definitely a lot less f uh, foolproof, but the uh, big rail... As you saw from the box, came with quite a few accessories. Uh, you got the old classic Marks uh, newsstand. And they actually gave you a string for the uh, telephone poles. Just classic uh, telephone pole, guys. It also came with a train station. I got that over here. But I, I've been trying to find a uh, um, base for it, but I've been having no luck with that. Uh, and then I set up some of the uh, Mark's track over here. Let me uh, pick the uh, tripod back up a little bit here. So you can actually get a little bit of a bird's eye view on this guy. Okay, 
So here is the uh, little stick I was telling you about uh, that you use on the uh, operating accessories. As you can see, it is down. Got nothing. But if you flip it up, if you're going that way, you got nothing. That way it catches. So mine is unfortunately missing the uh, little catch tray for them. So I need to find one of those. But, uh, take those guys off there. But you can see, ba bam! And done. Now you might notice these little contraptions here in the middle. Those are actually marks on couplers. Um, see, you can kind of see how the fork twists as it goes over so you just the couples so the other accessories you got with this guy I don't use this uh, fruit reefer car here you got that that guy there and what you got going on is there's a little little stick in here that comes across and it hits the wheels, and you can see the, the bands are moving back there, and that's how that guy works. Um, and you gotta use the Mark's cars on that line. Now I know just don't quite work, because Mark's has such a big flange on the car, and it just hits it. Um, it just does that. The other thing you got was a, uh, one of these guys, you just put some weight on it, and down it goes. But uh, yeah, the big rail set was a, uh, Pretty popular set, and you can find these pretty regularly at uh, train shows and such. Put the uh, camera back down here. So they're pretty, they're pretty common guys. They're not, not nothing too rare, but they do hold their value. Um, like I said mine's missing a few pieces, and clearly it never really been ran much. Um, As you saw, you're supposed to be able to uh, hook up a little rail yard, and then uh, here's one of the mark switches. This one's broke, which is a shame because it's like barely been used. But uh, you set that up, and you can run your train around. And, uh, you've never seen a uh, Mark's transformer. This guy, the uh, cord is unfortunately in bad shape. But uh, this is how you can kind of date these big rails a little bit. Uh, just a standard Mark's. Transformer, but this one has a circuit breaker, which was actually pretty uncommon for marks. But this one's got the uh, you actually manually reset it, so that's how you can date these guys as what kind of transformer them. But uh, this was offered in the uh, it's in the early 70s, they started offering this setup, and uh, it was uh, during the uh, Quaker Oats uh, era. Uh, Marx, uh, Lewis Marx had retired and had sold the company to Quaker Oats, and uh, it's kind of interesting because um, food companies were just buying up everything left and right. You know, General Mills wound up with Lino, Quaker Oats had Marx, um, so uh, I could go on and on and on with, and, and toy history about that kind of stuff. But uh, just a weird thing that happened for a while, so. Um, hopefully uh, I can track down the rest of the parts for this at some point and have a complete set, but it's a pretty good start. Um, it's not legally my wheelhouse for normal marks. I'm more of a tin plate marks guy, but you know, it's a nice set and, uh, you know, I wanted to talk to you guys about it and it's pretty cool for a sponsored video. So from the St. Louis area, definitely give them guys a check out, see if you can find anything you like. And I think we're done here. So I'll see you guys next time.